All right, now let's go to simplifying radicals. Because we can use rational exponents to represent radicals, uh, with um, the denominator of the rational exponent being the index of the, uh, of the radical, uh, we have to remember that we can use our properties of exponents to help us with this as well. Now there are different uh, things that you have to, criteria that you have to have to consider simplest radical form. All possible factors must be removed from the radical. Now I'll show that in an example here, but if you think about the square root of 8, 8 has a factor that's a perfect square. 4, 4 times 2 is 8. So I can simplify that because I know that the square root of 8 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, which is 2 square root of 2. But I'll show an example of that up here in just a second. No fractions under the radical signs. No radicals in the denominator. Because remember, if you have, and using these properties down here, if you have a root of a fraction, it is equal to the quotient of the numerator and the denominator, the roots of the numerator and the denominator. So that gives you that uh, radical that's in the denominator. Uh, and the index of the radical is to be reduced. I'll show you an example of that. I don't have any written up there, but I'll show you an example of that here uh, before I change screens. So what I'd like to do here is I'd like to use these properties to help me decide uh, how to simplify these expressions. So we'll start with A here. Now, uh, it says yeah, that the variables represent real numbers, but they don't uh, say whether the real numbers are positive or negative. A lot of times in these kinds of problems, the directions will say, assume that the variables represent positive numbers. But that's not the case here. And we have to be careful of that because you cannot take an, um, an even root of a negative number. Now, you say, well, maybe d is a negative number. d to the seventh then would be negative. No, because we're assuming that this expression is defined, so we have to assume in this case that d is a positive number. Now, if I want to take the fourth root of d to the seventh, I'm going to think of d to the seventh as d to the fourth times d to the third. I know that because my exponent here in my radicand is greater than my, uh, my index of my radical. So that means that this has a factor, in this case that's a perfect fourth power, d to the fourth. And that means I can take the fourth root of this. This is equal to d, this part right here, is equal to d times the fourth root of d to the third power. Now if it helps you, you can break it apart, the fourth root of d to the fourth times the fourth root of d to the third, and then that becomes the d and that becomes right there. Now there's a little shortcut that I tell my students, and that is to think of this four as a divisor. And you're dividing four into seven. Four goes into seven one time, notice one factor of d comes out. With three left over, notice three factors of d left in. I'll use that on a couple more examples here before it's all said and done. Let's look at b. The square root of 45. This is a great example of a problem that uh, can be simplified. Uh, it doesn't have a variable, but because there's a factor of 45, and we want the largest factor that's a 45, that's a perfect square, in this case, 9 times 5, I can rewrite this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 5, or three square roots of five, and that's considered simplest radical form. Shoot over here to problem C. I have those variables again, but it's not roots, so I don't have to worry about whether x or y is a positive or a negative number. It can be any real number. And I am doing the cube root of 54 x to the 13th, y to the eighth. Now I'm lazy. I don't want to have to write several steps down if I can kind of see it coming. I will need to take the cube root of the 54, the cube root of x to the 13th, the cube root of y to the 8th. I'm going to do the little division trick on the variable, but cube root, are there any perfect cubes that are factors of 54? And yes, it's 27 times 2. So if I go to take the cube root of this, the cube root of 54, which is 27 times 2, I can take the cube root of 27, that's 3. The 2 stays under the radical. I took the cube root of 27, I'm too lazy to write it all out, brought it out in front. Now I'll do the little division trick. 3 goes into 13 four times, so I take x to the fourth out with 1 left over, so I leave x to the first inside. 3 down on the y's goes into 8 two times, so I take a y to the second with 2 left over, so a y to the second there. And that's a nice little trick that makes me get the answer a little bit more quickly. Now, e, uh, excuse me, d, I'm going to multiply first. I have the square root of 15y times the square root of 21y. 
and that is the square root 15 times 21. I'm using this pro property back here, and this is the square root of, what would that be, 315. Y times Y is Y to the second power. Now again, because it's under the square root sign, it has to represent a positive number. Because when I take an even power uh, of, a, uh, of an expression of a, uh, containing a variable, and I get an even number of factors, or excuse me, an odd number of factors out of there, I have to be very, very careful. But I know that Y represents a positive number. Now, does 315 have any factors that are perfect squares? Well, let's see. I'm thinking 9 goes into 315 because if you add the, uh, each of the digits, it adds up to 9, which means it's divisible by 9. So that would be what? 9 times 35? 9 times 35. So again, I'm a little lazy. I'm just going to write it like that. I'm going to take the square root of 9, which is 3, and I'm going to leave the 35 inside. Now I'm going to take the square root of y squared, which would be just y to the first with none left over, so no variable left inside. And that one simplifies. Um, e, I'm going to do it right here. I think I've got space if I do so here. I have the cube root of 625 c to the second d to the tenth. Extend that. All over the cube root of 5 c to the fifth d. Well, I would probably try to simplify this by first using this property kind of in reverse and writing this, because I think some of this is going to simplify. If I write it as one big rational expression, this would be the cube root of 625 c to the second d to the 10 all over 5 c to the fifth d. I saw common factors of the variable c and d, and I noticed that 5, of course, divides into 625. So let's see what we can do here. This is going to be equal to the cube root. Now 5 goes into 5 one time. 5 goes into 625 125 times. So I get 125. I have two factors of C here. I cancel those two factors, but two factors of C here leave C to the third. That's in the denominator. I have 10 factors of D here. I have one factor here. This one cancels with one of these, leaves nine. So that's D to the third here. Well, I'm liking this problem that much more because every factor in the numerator and every factor in the denominator is a perfect cube. Okay, now I would probably take the time to write this as the cube root of 125 D to the third all over the cube root of C to the third. As far back as here, I knew that D was positive because of a single factor here, and I knew that C was positive because of an odd number of factors here. It's a cube root anyway, um, so I guess actually it could be positive or negative. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify since I'm doing the cube root. This is 5D all over C. 125 is 5 times 5 times 5. That's a, that's a perfect cube. 3 goes into 3 one time, none left over. 3 goes into 3 one time with none left over. Now I'm going to jump over to F here. I think I've got room here. Kind of follow along, I have the square root of a fraction, which I'm going to write as the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. That, of course, is 1 over the square root of 3. Now, I'm looking like I'm going to have trouble getting rid of that radical, so I'm going to do a process called rationalizing the denominator. And that means I'm going to make the denominator a rational number. And the easiest way to do that, since I just have a single factor and it's a square root down here, is to multiply it times itself. But whatever you do to the denominator, you must do to the numerator. So I'm going to multiply it top and bottom by the square root of 3, which of course is just 1. That's not going to change its value, but it will change its looks. 1 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 3, and the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, but that's just 3. And notice that my denominator is now a rational number, and it is in simplest radical form. Similarly, I'm going to do the same thing to g here. I have 10 over the square root of 2. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. And square root of 2 times square root of 2, of course, is square root of 4, which is 2. And this is 10 square root of 2. Now, I'm all done as far as simplifying uh, the radical. But I can see that my fraction will simplify because I have this factor of 10 and 2. 2 goes in 1 time, 2 goes in the 10 5 times. So this thing simplifies to 
5 square roots of 2 all over 1, or just 5 square roots of 2. I saved a good one here for a last, h. What I have here is I have a single radical in the denominator, but there's an extra term. So I have to use the conjugate trick to get myself to have a denominator that's a rational number. Now, conjugates for binomials, you may remember that if you have a minus b, the conjugate is a plus b. Well, in this case, the conjugate of 1 plus the square root of 2 would be 1 minus the square root of 2. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. There's no radical in the numerator. I'm not worried about that even if there was. But I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 1 minus the square root of 2. By doing that, the numerator, of course, is just 1 minus the square root of 2. But the denominator, if you do a double distributive or a FOIL effect here, you're going to get 1, the outer and the inner are going to cancel, minus 2. So this thing turns out to be 1 minus the square root of 2 all over negative 1. Well, if I divide top and bottom by negative 1, I get negative 1 plus the square root of 2, or the square root of 2 minus 1. Looks a little bit better, maybe that way. Now, that pretty much uh, gets, gets us through most of the examples as far as simplifying radicals. But there's a little bit left on what to do as far as if you can combine radicals by adding or subtracting. Well, we can combine fractions if they have the same denominator. We can add and subtract fractions with common denominators. And we can combine like terms when we are simplifying expressions. So to add and subtract radicals, we have to be able to have like radicals. So I'm just going to kind of sneak that in here. I'm going to erase this for now. Hopefully we're always decent. And I'm going to do a couple of examples that have to do with that. Now, like radicals means just what the name would indicate. It means that the uh, index are the same and the radicands are the same. So if I have 2 square roots of 3 plus 4 square roots of 3, and I'm saying, can I combine these? Absolutely. That radical is the same as that radical. It's as if I'm combining 2a plus 4a, which we know is 6a. This is 6 square roots of 3. It simplifies. On the other hand, if I have 2 square roots of 3, and I'm adding 3 square roots of 2, even though they're both square roots, they have different, um, they have different radicands, and therefore you cannot combine those. You cannot add those. Now, you do need to be careful, though, because even though this one does not simplify, if I have... 2 square roots of 8 plus 3 square roots of 2. They look like they won't simplify, but this guy or won't combine, but this guy simplifies. 8 is 4 times 2, so this is the same as 4 square roots of 2 plus 3 square roots of 2, which of course is 7 square roots of 2. So make sure that the radicals are simplified first before trying to combine them. Here's uh, an example that's a little bit more complicated. Again, I'm going to add and subtract as indicated. And for right now, we're, going to, we're just going to indicate that the variables represent positive real numbers so we don't have to worry about if it's negative or positive with a, an, an even root. So if my example is negative 4, the cube root of 5w, plus 9, the cube root of 5w, minus 11, the cube root of 5w. Well, my radicals are all the same. And I'm adding and subtracting, so it's just a, a matter of combining the coefficient-looking types of uh, real numbers there. I have negative 4 of these plus 9 of these. That'd be 5 minus 11 of them would be negative 6, the cube root of 5w. And that's as far as that one would simplify. The radical's already in simplest form. Let me try one more. I can squeeze this in. The square root of 75cd to the fourth plus 6d, the square root of 27cd to the second. Now, upon first inspection, you look at this and you figure, well, there's no way these are going to combine because these are two very different looking radicals. But both of these radicals simplify. Remember, we're taking a square root, this is 25 times 3. And this is 9 times 3. And in this case, I can take the square root of 25, that's 5. 
I can leave the 3 inside, stays inside. C is to the first power, so there's nothing I can do there, but think of it as a 2. 2 goes into 4 two times, none left over, no factors of D go there. Plus, since I can take the square root of 9 and that's 3, I bring a factor of 3 out, that leaves me 18, and I have this D right now, and that would leave 3, the C, but d to the second is a perfect square, 2 goes into 2 one time, I can take that factor of d out and I have a d squared there. Center of a gun, these are like radicals and I can combine these, in fact these have the same d squared, these expressions can be combined, 5 of them plus 18 of them gives me 23 d to the second, the square root of 3c. Now. There are lots of other kinds of examples that you'll come across. I did not do an example of every uh, single example. I did want to mention, though, that if I, if I have an expression that looks like this, if I have uh, the sixth root of x squared, that seems to be in simplest radical form because the 2 here is smaller than the 6. But if we think of this in terms of rational exponents, this is going to be the same thing as x to the 2 6, which is x to the 1 3rd, which is the cube root of x. And that's what I meant by simplifying your index whenever possible. All right, that about wraps it up.